The bane of most medical and dental students' lives is the UCAT. Almost every medical and dental school requires you to take this test, and with that comes the research and preparation while everyone else seems to be enjoying the summer holidays. Keep watching this video to get a head start on what the UCAT is, where and when it's sat, and the type of questions it entails. This is the ultimate UCAT guide. Hi everyone, my name's Jess from Medic Mind. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Birmingham. If you'd like to learn more about the UCAT, BMAT, medical school interviews and all that sort of stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit the round bell so you don't miss anything. And keep watching to find out everything you could possibly want to know about the UCAT. So, what is it? The UCAT stands for the University Clinical Aptitude Test. It was introduced in 2006 because, as you'll realise once you start meeting other medical students and going to interviews, everyone's already got a gold D of E, has volunteered for 10 years in a care home, and probably has double the number of A stars you have, and you thought you got the most. It's a way for universities to rank people when so many people already meet and exceed their other requirements for admission, and it's another barrier to having a proper summer holiday. Let me know in the comments when you're taking your UCAT and the summer you're going to treat yourself to after. However, it's not all bad. The UCAT is really different to your A-levels or IB that you might be taking. And because of that, it's an opportunity for you to shine in other areas that aren't tested by your school exams. It's an opportunity to think a bit differently to the way that you do at school. And it gets yourself used to the type of critical reasoning you'll have to start using once you start university. When you start talking to older students, you might hear them talk about the UK CAT. But what's that? And have you signed up for the wrong test? Don't worry, the UCAT was changed from the UK CAT in 2019 to reflect the fact the test is now also used in Australia and New Zealand. The format of the exam is still exactly the same. So if you hear about UK CAT questions or UK CAT tips, don't worry, you can use those as well to help your revision. But you might be thinking now, what skills is the UCAT testing if it's not like school exams? The UCAT is what's called an aptitude test. It's not like a school exam that's meant to test you on knowledge that you've already learned and is instead meant to test your kind of inherent problem solving ability. It's used as well as school exams to select applicants because it's not testing knowledge that you would have learned at school. This is to try and make things fairer to people who had different school experiences and it also reflects the type of thinking that you'll have to use more and more as a healthcare professional. However, just because it's not testing learnt knowledge doesn't mean that you can't prepare. Take a look at the links below for Medic Mind's guide to each section of the UCAT and how you can prepare and practice for each one. So let's talk about the sections of the UCAT. There are five sections to the exam and each one tests a different skill. The first one is verbal reasoning. So this looks at your ability to answer questions based on quite long passages of text. You have to be good at filtering out information from quite dense paragraphs and figuring out whether something's true or not, even if the answer isn't explicitly laid out in the text for you. This section is 22 minutes long. Decision making is a second section and it looks at your ability to evaluate arguments. The answers can either be yes or no or choosing which statement is correct. Question types can include deductive reasoning, which is choosing which statement follows on from the text that they've already given you, evaluating arguments, and being able to read and interpret numbers and graphs. This section is 32 minutes long. Quantitative reasoning is basically just maths to the level of a good pass at GCSE. The difficult part is understanding what the question is asking or figuring out what mathematical operation you need to do to answer it. This section is 25 minutes long. The fourth section is abstract reasoning, and this is probably the least like something you've done before before in an exam. It's looking at your ability to identify patterns and you have to decide which one would follow on from a sequence or which one is the odd one out. And this section is 14 minutes long. Situational judgment is the last part of the test and it's where you'll be given real world scenarios taking place in a healthcare setting and you need to decide what to do. You'll need to keep things in mind like professionalism, ethics and teamwork. This section is 27 minutes long. And after all that, you'll have finished your UCAT. Keep in mind, the timings that I did give you include one minute to read an explanation of the section before you start. The whole thing is two hours total, and believe me, you'll be working for the entirety of the two hours. So let's move on to the logistics. When do you take it? Where do you take it? And most importantly, how do you get the results? Keep listening and I'll explain everything. So firstly, when and where. The UCAT is a computer-based exam, so you'll take it in a testing center near you. Normally this is a driving test centre, so you might have been here before as well. This also means you'll have to choose the date that you take your UCAT. 
You'll probably need to think carefully about this and factor in other things that you'll be doing over the summer, whether you've got holidays booked and how long you're going to need to spend preparing, and also whether you're someone who wants to get it done ASAP and get it out of the way, or if you think you'll need a little bit more time. Test booking and registration normally starts in May and runs through to September, and the actual test taking period is from July to October and the results are then sent to your medical schools that you've applied to in November. Something that you also have to factor in when you take your UCAT is cost. Yes, unfortunately, you do have to pay to take an exam. The cost is £55 if you take it between the 1st of July and the 31st of August. It's £88 if you take it between the 1st of September and the 2nd of October, and it's £115 if you're taking it from outside the EU. However, you can apply for a UCAT bursary, which will cover the entire test fee. Take a look at the UCAP website, which has more details about this. Now, let's talk about results. Unlike your school exams, you'll get your results from the UCAT as soon as you finish taking it as a printout. That means no anxious waiting to hear back, but it also means you need a rough idea of what the scores actually mean. So when you get your results back on test day, it will be made up of a numerical score for the first four sections, which can be added up to give a total out of 3,600. And you'll get a band between one and four for situational judgment. People will often talk about their UCAT average and you get that by dividing your total score just by four. And some universities use UCAT averages as a cutoff when deciding who gets an interview and who doesn't. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you a bit more about how different universities will use your UCAT. 30 medical schools in the UK use the UCAT. So no matter where you apply, you'll probably end up applying to at least one university that will require you to take the exam. However, the way universities use your UCAT score varies massively. Bristol, for example, use UCAT scores only to determine who gets an interview. Whereas at Birmingham, decision to interview is based 60% on your GCSE performance and 40% on your UCAT score. The benefit of getting your UCAT score as soon as you take it is that you can start applying tactically. If the UCAT wasn't your strength, you can avoid universities that only use your UCAT score to determine whether you get an interview. Whereas if it was something you did really well in, it might be worth considering some universities that weight this a bit higher in your application. And if you're wondering what is a good UCAT score, check out our other video in the links below. So my final tip is not to panic. Especially this year, taking the UCAT is really stress inducing, but at the end of the day, almost every medic has taken the UCAT and come out the other side. Some have taken it more than once as well. And it certainly doesn't mean that you're bound to be a bad doctor if you don't do well. The UCAT is a chance to get an insight into the kind of thinking that's required to be a healthcare professional. And once you familiarise yourself with this style of thinking, you'll probably see it popping up all over. If you want to learn more ways to improve your personal statement, ace the UCAT, BMAT, and all that other sort of medical application stuff, don't forget to subscribe. And if you found it useful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and maybe share it with someone else who you know who's taking the UCAT. If you have any UCAT top tips, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to go the extra mile, check out the Medic Mind UCAT revision course. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.